In this video, we're going to optimize this graphics card, a 3050 RTX with 8 gigabytes. This card was a lifesaver for gamers back when RTX 3060 Ti and high-end cards were hard to come by because in 2022, mining hadn't yet come to an end. So Nvidia decided to release this graphics card to keep stock available for customers who couldn't find a card in stores because there was never any stock. At the time, an RTX 3060 T was very expensive, costing up to $850 in some countries for a mid-range card. Crazy, right? During that time, the recommended cards were the 1660 Super or 1050 T, which were the most common options available at a good price. But even an RTX 2060 was expensive and hard to find because of mining. All of this happened just a few months ago. Anyway, this graphics card isn't high-end or even mid-range. It's a low to mid-range card, which means that for some games it might fall short in performance, but it was the only option available in 2022. You either bought this card or had nothing. So in this video, we're going to see how this graphics card performs today. We'll be using an optimization method I've shown before in a previous video on how to get more FPS, which you can find linked in the description of this video and in a note here on the right. If you also want to fully optimize your PC, I'll leave the best guide for getting more FPS in any game without damaging your system down in the comments section. These methods have been tested for months and have caused no issues, so you can check out the link in the comments. Alright guys, as you can see, this is the graphics card. Once we're on Windows, in my case, Windows 11 Pro, we'll use this setup in our NVIDIA control panel. The important part is these two options. Set it to performance and then check the second option to apply the settings. Then head over to the global 3D settings and set them like this. You can pause the video and copy each setting. Alright guys, the first game we're going to test is Minecraft. As you can see, the FPS we get is very good. With the default NVIDIA settings, the difference can be between 40 and 60 FPS. So in this case, the optimization helps a lot. And if we set the graphics to max, we get stable FPS. In my case, I have a 240 Hz monitor. So I can set the FPS to match my monitor because I know this graphics card can easily reach those FPS. Now guys, we're in Fortnite, the game that helps us see the real FPS in Fortnite. In my case, I can easily hit 600 FPS in creative mode, and even 700 in some instances depending on the creative map. But in the main Fortnite map, these are the FPS we're getting. They're not bad at all, and we can set it to the refresh rate of our monitor, like 240 Hz, without any problems, and the FPS remains very stable. Just to clarify guys, in my case, I have excessive GPU usage only because I'm recording with the same graphics card using OBS. However, it's not too bad since the temperature isn't too high. Keep in mind that this graphics card is primarily for gaming and not for recording as it's quite limited. This is why we're seeing high temperatures and high usage, but even so, we're still maintaining smooth gameplay. So guys, we can conclude that this graphics card is still worth using today. I also want to mention that this card has DLSS technology, which I highly recommend enabling in Fortnite or any other game that supports it. In Fortnite, you should use DLSS with DirectX 12, as that's where it's available. I don't recommend using ray tracing since this is a lower end card, and you won't get real performance from it. DLSS is the only useful option here. And well guys, I'd love for you to leave a comment below telling me how many FPS you're getting with this graphics card in your games. It doesn't matter if it's Fortnite or Minecraft, Feel free to test it in Valorant, Warzone, or any game you have so we can see what FPS you were able to achieve. Also, if you only have 8GB of RAM, you won't see a significant improvement since modern games demand a lot from your RAM, CPU, and GPU. This means that many components in your CPU will determine how many FPS you can get. With all that said, I'll say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.